it's only the way how you design your worksheets that will distinguish you from a new bit microsoft excel and elevate your worksheet setup and design to an advanced excel user and therefore in this class we're going to be discussing all the formats that you need to know before you start designing your worksheets and without wasting a lot of your time let's dive into today's lesson we are going to be talking about sales and sale content formatting all sales have a default format of a general format so whichever data type you punch into a sale it will be taken in and displayed as is whenever you want to modify the appearance of a number or a date or just changing borders adding uh sale borders changing text alignment orientation all that that you're doing is part of formatting the way how you format your worksheet will really tell as to whether you're a professional user or you're just a beginner like many of us okay so that's the small presentation that i had now let's head over to the workbook that i did share with you and then we look at these things practically so this is the workbook that i shared with everyone now there's an example that i've just demonstrated in our presentation and i said for example if you typed in here let me just go ahead and type in here 0 0.5 six seven eight this is a decimal number but when i hit enter key on the keyboard this will be aligned to the right you can see even if i enlarge this particular column the number is still aligning to the right that means it has been recognized as a number now i can actually change this by just clicking in the number head over to the home tab and under the number group of tools here I can change it either inside the dialog launcher here or I can use the drop down that is right here. And I can either change it to a number, currency, accounting, short date, and so on and so forth. But because I want just to reduce the decimal places to only two, I can either use these buttons here, these commands increase decimal, decrease decimal. So I can reduce this one to two decimal places. This will change the format that i'm looking at with my naked eyes 0 0.57 but again you can see in the formula bar i still have my original number so that's why we say every time you look at something before you actually confirm that that's exactly what you're seeing head over to your formula bar and check because whatever will be sitting in the formula bar is the number or the value that will be used in calculations because formatting is just a facade when we launch this particular dialog box here when we launch our format dialog box we see a lot of things here under the number group of tools we see the general format and we also have the number the number format so inside the number format the number of things we can do for as long as the value you're working with is a number you can reduce the decimal places or you can increase the decimal places if you don't do it from here if you don't reduce or increase from here like i'm doing as i i think you can see if you don't do it from here then you have to come back on the home tab and use these buttons these commands then you can also do use a thousand separators so what this one does is that it adds the separator which is always a comma so it puts commas every after three three digits how do you want the negative numbers to show it is very important to format your negative numbers differently yes accountants like to use these formats here you can either use parentheses and you know maintain your default font color which is black so parentheses will mean that this is a negative number or you can do parentheses with a red font color which will still mean negative or you can just do red font to mean that this is a negative number so either whatever you choose or you can actually use the first one here which is just adding a negative symbol at the beginning of the number so these are the options that we have under the number format which we can customize or which we can add onto our numbers now we also have these two things here currency and accounting they seem to be the same but they are not <laughs> i don't know whether people can spot the difference here with accounting, Excel will define for you how the negative numbers will show. But with the current format, you can declare, you can choose from these negative format or negative numbers how you want them to show. Let me actually do that to demonstrate it practically here. But I've added some notes for us here to read. 
All right, so let's do that here. Yeah? I have a smaller table. We shall just populate random numbers, round between, and let's do 1,000 and 10,000 maybe, just random numbers so that we can demonstrate how these formats can be applied. All right, now we have this particular table and maybe I want to change the formats for these numbers. How do I do that? Of course, quite very easy. Highlight the entire range of numbers and then come over to the home tab and you have these quick options here. You have the quick commands here. You can say increase decimal. So immediately I click this button here. It will add the decimal format. That number will change and show me as a decimal number. So I've just changed the format and there you go. I can keep increasing by just clicking that particular command. Or I can reduce and take it back to zero. That's a quick way of formatting your stuff. Or I can say I have this particular format here which is either counting, this is actual accounting number format. So if I want to do that, and I don't want to navigate over to this particular button or to use the dialog launcher right here, I can do it from here. I can choose my symbol and I click in the format. This will also apply the accounting format. Or I can do percent, or I can do comma style. So this one just adds the 1,000 separator like we saw. So that's how you do the formatting very fast. I like to use the comma, uh, the comma style, and then I do reduce the number of decimals there. If I don't want to know, you know, to do a specific accounting or currency format, that's what I use. Now, I wanted to show you the difference between the accounting and currency. So I will copy these numbers here and paste them right here. Control V. Again, I'll get the randomizer working, and I can scroll the sides as well as repopulate new numbers. I can copy and remove the formulas. And now we have our numbers here formatted with, with the comma style. So let us format one number with the accounting format, and we also format the other number with the currency format so that we can spot the difference practically. That's how I like to do things. So I like this entire range, come back to the home tab, and then I'll say, apply the accounting, accounting format. I do this right there, and there you go. You can see, this will add the dollar symbol because that's what I chose, the United States dollar. But you can literally come in here and pick any of your currency symbol, whether you're using Kenya shillings or UGX, you can still do that. Now it's together can come to more accounts and yeah, and set up your own your own currency symbol all right together now let us use the same sorry let us use the currency format here and spot the difference i can actually reduce the decimal places here to zero and there you go so this is how the accounting format will do it for you maybe what i will do i will add in some negative numbers here uh, so that we can spot how this particular uh, let me see if this one can convert to negative. There you go. I also convert this one to negative. There you go. So this is how the accounting format will show our numbers. It puts us or it gives us the dollar symbol or the currency symbol, and it has put some space. As you can see, there is some there is enough space in between the currency symbol and the numbers themselves. Let us do for currency and see if we can get another difference here so for this one i'll click in the drop down here and then i go for currency once i do that i can also reduce the decimal to zero so that it looks exactly like this and there you go let me hope that you have already spotted the difference so with the currency this particular dollar symbol will always be attached to the number very close <laughs> as you can see very tight the currency symbol will be tight on your numbers now we're together and for the accounting your numbers will have extra space between the currency symbol and the number themselves so it is dependent on you which one looks a little bit better on your side you apply that one but again there are different circumstances or scenarios that my call for you either using currency format or accounting format either way please 
That's how simple you do it, okay? Of course, we talked about the date and time as one of the main data types that we'll be working with. How does Excel look at dates? This is very important. Now, what we can do for the date and time formats is to demonstrate how Excel looks at dates. Remember, we said at the beginning when we were introducing ourselves these formats, Excel looks at dates as numbers because these dates can be used in arithmetic. For those people who attended our recent class, we actually looked at when we were working out our financial statements, we looked at this date column as the most important data point for our financial statements to generate. The reason is because there is no transaction that is complete without a date. So dates are very important. Whenever you're submitting things, whenever you're working on deadlines, whenever you're dealing with your returns, I don't know whichever stuff you're doing, for as long as it involves dates, dates are very important. So I've provided some notes for you guys to read here, and I will demonstrate how Excel looks at dates. So all dates are stored as integers representing the number of days since January 1st, 1900. Yes, that's the calendar system, or that's the number that Excel uses as the starting position. Number one in Excel, if you format it as a date, it will show as 1st January 1900. So I'll come here and punch in here one. If I wanted to change this one into a date, because I know dates are numbers, are we together? I can just come to the home tab and launch my dialog uh, launcher or click in my dialog launcher, and then this will open the format dialog box here. I can go for the date format of my choice here. So let me pick any that looks better to me. I can go with this format. And there you go. You can see this one that I punched here, which was a one, has now converted into January 1st, 1900, automatically by just changing the format of that number. The format that you see, or the separators that you see that separate between date, month, and year, that is just a simple format. But the value that Excel sees or the value that Excel knows in its brain is a number. For example, today's date. What is today's date? I believe today is, is 4th of March 2024. That is the date for today. When I hit enter, this will change format automatically. Remember when I was punching this date, I said 4th of March 2024. 2024. I just separated with a forward slash. Now together. But when I hit enter, did you see what happened? This date format changed. Where is Excel picking this date format? I will show you in just a moment. So this one is picked from what we call the local settings, the settings of your operating system. For example, you can see when I come over to the uh, uh for to the taskbar here, the the settings that I have here will determine how the, the dates will show automatically. That's why you saw this particular value changing. Don't ask yourself why. Now, if I actually removed the date format, why you're looking at this one as 4th of March 2024 is because there is a date format. Otherwise, when I remove the date format, this might change into a number. Let's do that. I come over to the home tab, remove the date format, and take this one back to journal. So journal, whenever you, you do journal, you're literally removing all the formats. So journal, there is no specific format. You just want to leave the number as is or the value as is. So when you do that, you get this number returned. This number is not, is not wrong. This is not an error. There is no error. This is not a virus. Uh -uh. If this was a dead column, and you saw numbers like these ones here. Uh, 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 uh. Don't worry, these are correct dates. These are recognized proper dates. It's only that you haven't formatted them properly. If you format, they will show them how you want. Because we say formatting is just something that we see or is a visual representation of something, but it does not change the underlying value. Okay? So I'll just change this format back to date. And I can do that from here. I can do short date right there. And you can see, I get 4th 
of March 2024. So dates and numbers. When do they start counting? From 1st Jan 1900. That's when the Excel calendar starts working. And where does it end? It stretches up to 31st mm -hmm, of December. Uh, I don't know how to read this year here. Can someone help me? <laughs> How can I read this year here? I don't know whether uh, people on this call will see this year coming. I'm not sure, but someone can help us and read this year. And say, Mr. Tracy, can you read for us this year? Uh, 9,999. Hmm? 9, 9,999. 9, so today we are in 2024. This particular Excel that you're working with stretches up to to this particular date so if you punched in a date that is beyond that is beyond this particular minimum and maximum number expect a weird value that you will see or an error <laughs> if you punch in something that is actually less than the minimum value expected for a date expect something you can test that and tell us what you're seeing <laughs> do that and tell us what you're seeing punch in any date that is below January 1st, 1900, or a date that is above 31st December, 19, I don't know how to read this year, 9,009, something like that. Uh, Tracy has actually read it for us properly, okay? And I've given you some numbers here that represent the specific date serial numbers. So this is just called a date serial number, but the value behind is, the value behind is always the number of days that have elapsed since 1900 okay similarly time in excel of course it's looked at similarly like the how excel looks at dates but these ones are stored in decimals between 0 0.0 and 0.9999 like as you can see so this one simply represents a proportion of the day for example 0, 0.0 yes 0, 0.0 is exactly midnight this is always the start and this is the end, towards the end, you get this number here, which is always 23, uh, 59, 59. So 23 is 11, 59 minutes, 59 seconds. Yes, thank you. I just wanted to ask uh, if we put the 9,999 as a figure, and then we put the the, the time uh, format, would it change to 23, 5959? Thank you. Yes, yes, it will change. If you say 0 0.99999, let's change this one to time and see what time value we shall pick, you see? So when I change this one to time, and of course I'm gonna be going with this default time value that is being picked from my local and say, okay, this is what I get, 11.59.59. So if I punch here 0, 0.0, and I convert this one into time, let us see what we get. So if I do that, I get exactly this time value returned. Uh, so this is what you wanted to test, I believe. You can test all these numbers. If I say 0 0.25, test these numbers and convert this one into time. Mm -hmm. Let us double check. And I'll take this one to time. You see, this is 6 a.m. This is what I did show here. Test all these particular decimal values here. Of course, text we said, these are sentences, these are words, these are what? We talked about the data types in our previous class. But again, when you work with numbers and format them as text, that's what always brings issues. Someone punches in a formula, the formula that doesn't produce anything. You're actually working with numbers. You can see their numbers, but because the format is a text, that's why your formulas are not working. So I said, when a cell is formatted as text, Excel will treat the cell value as a text string. Whether it's a number, whether it's a date, it will be looked at as a text string. That's why we say that time, date can both be text and numbers at the same time. Depends on the format that you have applied. If I punch in here a number, Let's say this is a number, and maybe this entire column has been formatted as text. Let me do that. So I'll just change this one to text. 
and say okay you can see immediately this number will align to will align to the left because we said numbers will always align to the right whereas text will always align to the left so because this is seen as text even though it is a number it is aligning to the left so if numbers are formatted as text they will not work in arithmetic because you can see all these numbers are formatted as text they are actually aligning to the left Whereas if I punch the same numbers here, let me just copy and paste right here. Now you can see this number here is aligning to the left, but this one is aligning to the right. Now, if I want to do simple summation here, let me just do a sum here for these numbers and see if we shall get something here. You see, we don't get anything back here, but let us try summing up these ones here and see. Of course, we still have numbers showing as text here. These ones, let me just get rid of these ones here and punch in new numbers like so. So let us do summation here. I'm just trying stuff here to see if it works. Yeah, you can see for these ones, we have been able to achieve a simple summation. But for these ones, when I tried to do the sum, this is what I got because these numbers are not formatted properly. How do you check? that this number is formatted as text. You either click inside the number and come over to the home tab under your number of group of tools, you will see the format that has been applied to that number. So I can see straightforward that this is text, so I can't do arithmetic. I can't do calculations. My formulas will not work on text. Other formulas can work on text, like count, a count, whatever, but like simple summation, division, multiplication will not work. But for these ones, if I check here and come over to the home tab and check inside the number group of tools here, I will see that the number format that is applied or the format is a number. So that's why the summation here is able to work. That's very important to note. Sometimes you will see your formula is not working simply because your data or your numbers have been formatted as text. Let me hope that that is very clear. Now, with formatting, let's end up with sales styles here. If you click in the drop down here for sales styles, what do you see? You see a number of formats here that you can work with. For example, for this particular table, if I wanted my top column, sorry, top rows here to look a little bit different, I can do that. I can simply highlight this and come over to the sales styles and pick maybe from the titles and headings here. I'll pick one of them. I can go with this. I can go with this. I can go with this. You can see the, the format that I get here whenever I click on any of these options here. I'm just hovering over. You see? So pick whatever you want. I like to use this one here. You can see it adds a very simple line. Okay, you just control Z to go back. So it adds a very simple thick line just beneath. And maybe I can also differentiate how this one should show. So I can highlight this one here for our ears and come back to sales styles. For this one, I can pick from the themes here. So I look for something nice here, maybe to be consistent with our line. I can go with this or this one here. Okay, so you can see I'm formatting the way how my worksheet should look like. If you want to take it a little bit further, you can add in uh, these ones that we call borders here. So I can highlight here and maybe I'll say I want top and bottom border here. And now if I want to replicate this format, all these other cells I can highlight and use my format painter. Remember, we did talk about the format painter when we looked at our cursors. Do you remember? Now it's coming back here. I can do this quickly. So I pick the format and highlight all these other cells in one go, like so. And you can see this particular format has replicated all these other cells very fast. And this is what I have achieved. I can go back for my headers here and change the sales styles to heading two. And there you go. Can you see this is looking a little bit professional to me? <laughs> But I don't know how it is to you. You can let us know uh, whether you leave it to the default or this one looks a little bit better. Yeah, Emmanuel, I can see your thumbs up there. So you're confirming that this one looks a little bit professional. So that's how you do it. Maybe if we added a total column here, I'll just say total. And then we can create a simple formula here for auto summing these things here. And I can drag using my fill handle now i can also format the way how i want my total row to show okay and i can pick that this one from the cell styles can come here and say maybe i want my totals to show like this so this guy has already created this particular format here for me so feel free create your own styles have them added here and check or use them anytime you want 
I believe you learned a thing or two. And if you did, please let me know in the comment section of this video. Like this video. Do not forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you do not miss such classes like this. And by the way, watch the next video that is showing on your screen so that you can take your Excel skills to the next level. See you there. Bye-bye.